Hi, I'm Phil Funkenbush, the show's director here at the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Museum. Uh, today we have Richard Hellison, the playwright. He's the author of our production, One Destiny, that's been running at the museum since Lincoln's birthday week, and hopefully will run throughout the bicentennial year and beyond. Um, we're going to ask just a few <laughs> questions. I saw your play at Ford's Theater in 2007. How did you come up with the idea, and if, even to, does, to come to the decision to use non-famous people, in other words, Harry Hawk and Harry Ford, for Prob a historical play? Probably two reasons. One was that an earlier version of the play, which I did not write, featured John Wilkes Booth, and that was a problem at Ford's Theater. Um, aside from that, I think it was um, the difficulty of trying to write a play that would appeal to a general audience and try to be about, say, Abraham Lincoln, or try to be about a famous person. And I have a problem with that. Um, I, not that I, you know, I love Lincoln, but trying to get into the psychology of Lincoln and at, at the scene of his murder. Uh, but I was always drawn to the average person who's caught in the historical day. And when I first thought about it, the person I was most drawn to was Harry Hawk, who's the guy standing on stage doing a show when this happens and suddenly confronts the assassin staring him down with a knife. That was kind of my seed to begin it. And then everything after that was about how could we tell the story through him and then through through Harry Ford and then sub-characters who they, they, they then play who were also there during the day. Right. It also seems to me just immersed in the 19th century theater. Yes. So did you yes. just completely research all of these people? I mean, Laura Keene, mm -hmm. all these actors are very, very alive yes. to us. Good. Even though we don't see them, mm. they're very alive in the show. I was. I actually did, I did some research in 19th century theater, mm -hmm. and, not, and both theater architecture as well as, as right. theater history, because mm -hmm. the very specific architecture of Ford's, the fact that there's a passage under the stage that would allow Booth to get from the alley to the front, and there was a, where people were, where the dressing rooms were, and the gas lighting, and the size of the orchestra pit, one of the reasons nobody could pursue him was by the time they got over the orchestra pit, he was already out the door. Um, where the, the class divisions, who was able to sit on the ground floor and who had to go up top, and what the, bo what the purpose of boxes were, to be seen, not really to see the play. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of that. Um, and then again, just this play, and the, the way acting companies would come into town. You'd be hired for a short run. You'd ship your possessions. You would send your mail to the theater. So that's why Booth was there to pick up his mail. All those things all have to do with 19th century theater. Yeah, I, I did research that. Yeah. The, um, we, we get lots of questions after the performances, and I'm, now I'm trying to think of some of the, <laughs> some of the questions, but uh, a lot of them want to know about Harry Hawk. Mm -hmm. A lot of them ask about the coat, mm -hmm. the one destiny yeah. in it. Um, what was it like for you to see this play performed on the stage of Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C.? Can I go back to the coat? Sure, please. Because that was a very specific trigger. Um, in a sense, the obviously the title comes from the coat. And when I was first went to Ford's, I was taken down to the museum by the National Park Service superintendent on the site. And there's a lot, they have a lot of things in the museum, but the one that caught me was the Brooks Brothers coat that was made for Lincoln for his second inaugural, which he wore to the theater that night. There are blood stains on the collar, mm -hmm. and embroidered on the inside is the eagle with one country, one destiny. And that word destiny just jumped off that coat at me. And the two meanings of it, both the, the sense of destiny, the country as a whole having a destiny, and Lincoln guiding the destiny, but also that sense, as, as Harry Ford says in the play, a play has a destiny. It has to play out to the end. And yet there's always a point at which it could go another way. And therefore, is there a way in this, in this what they're doing, the reenactment, to find the moment that something might have changed? And ultimately, they find out that it isn't. Yeah. Um, so there was that. And then to do it on the stage of the theater then, where the code is in the basement, and you knew that these people were on this stage, and that the f half the furnishings in the box and the picture of, wa of George Washington were original to the time. They were there that night. Mm -hmm. um, it was great. <laughs> it was very satisfying. But also kind of, um, probably the, the, the strangest moment was I had to decide whether to have a gunshot. And I love the way you did that, by the way, oh, to drop the box lid to make the gunshot. I wasn't sure how you were going to do that. At Ford's, they have a recording, they have a, a gunshot, a pop goes off. And I thought, this is kind of daring to actually, yeah. in Ford's theater, have a gunshot sound. And everybody just sort of jumps, mm -hmm. you know. But I thought, well, I need to do that, um, you know, because right. it's the moment of, it, of, it, of history. But also, 
the, to, to focus it to at that point. And but to hear it in that space with those actors portraying those people it was like, it was a really sort of eerie, amazing feeling. Yeah. Tell us about the new play because I hope it'll be seen mm. here as well in the future. Same idea, same same restrictions. Two actors, one set. You know, very minimal things. Uh, and my my homework on this one was to be the surrendered Appomattox. And I think that the director who of One Destiny was thinking that I would take the same approach, which was have a couple of actors playing Confederate soldiers, Union soldiers, mm -hmm. to kind of do the whole thing. And I told him, I said, I, I've done that with right. One Destiny. I don't want to repeat that mm -hmm. specific scheme. And the more I looked at the end of it, I thought, this is really about Grant and Lee, and they have to be the characters. Yeah. And he said, oh, that's going to give us casting difficulties. <laughs> I said, well, I'm sorry. You just got to work around it, um, because they're the ones that it's really about. So uh, I, I did a similar sort of research process, um, went to Appomattox, you know, read a great deal about the end of the Civil War. Um, I don't think I even told you this. Uh, I spent four months working on a draft, wow. which is basically the entire last week from the fall of, of, of Petersburg to Appomattox Courthouse. And we, then we went out to Appomattox, I had that in my bag, and we looked around and we talked about things that happened. And we discovered that the day after the surrender, Grant and Lee had another conversation that not many people know about. And we suddenly went, that's the play. Yeah. So I threw away my four months work and I wrote the new one in two days <laughs> <laughs> in Washington. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's changed very little actually since that draft. Well, hopefully it'll be on stage that here at some great. point. <laughs> this is Richard Hellison with us from Sacramento, California. Yeah. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Phil. Thanks. It's terrific.